Hello folks, welcome back to the show here on Flake Direct, where I give you guys the latest that happened in movie news throughout the week, and then I give you guys my personal take on the matter at hand. I'm your host, Austin Pum, and let's jump into some very interesting news regarding Avengers Infinity War. Yes, the first part of the two-part new Avengers films coming out. The second part, you know, A4 as they're calling it next year. I absolutely loved Avengers Infinity War. It's not quite my favorite MCU film, but for certain it's in my top five, maybe my top three, just behind Black Panther because I love Black Panther. But recently there was an interview that the Rooster Brothers had with Collider, and during the interview, one of the Rooster Brothers, I don't remember if it was Joe or Anthony Russo, but one of them mentioned that the film was almost narrated by Thanos himself. Now this would have been interesting considering that this would have been probably the first time, actually no, it would have been the first time that a MCU film would have had a narration, if I remember correctly, I can't really Think of another MCU film that had narration, probably the first Iron Man, maybe? But given the events of Infinity War, it makes sense, possibly. I don't know how they would have made it work, I didn't listen to the entire interview, but Thanos, if you really think about it, Thanos really is the main character of Infinity War. It really does focus on Thanos more than any other Avenger in the movie. Now I'm just really curious to hear a Thanos narrated MCU film. That would have been one of the more interesting movies out there, I feel like, if it would have happened. For our next news story, we have some news surrounding the Kingsman prequel, Kingsman the Great Game, I believe it's called. Now we have two topics regarding this, but the first one being in that Game of Thrones star Charles Dance, the man who played Tywin Lannister, is and talks where I believe he's been cast to play in a lead role, which I think is very interesting. If you guys haven't seen Game of Thrones, watch it. I mean, it's incredible. But not only is Charles Dance joining the Kingsman franchise, but get this. Apparently Kingsman the Great Game, I'm pretty sure that's the prequel's name, but apparently it's going to be a period drama? Now personally, I don't know how this is going to work because if you guys have seen the previous Kingsman movies, which by the way, I love the first Kingsman, the second one, I liked, but definitely disappointing for certain. But the two Kingsman films that we have gone so far have been stylish, essentially only just the Bond franchise. They're very action heavy, have some great drama. But the fact that Matthew Vaughn wants to make Kingsman the Great Game a period drama, I don't know how that'll work, really, considering the tone of the previous Kingsman movies. I'm a bit skeptical, but at the same time, it's a role that he loves, so we'll see how it goes out. Alright, so our new story coming up is something that I didn't think I would hear about because I thought that Mission Impossible Fallout was going to be the last Mission Impossible movie due to how, just how insane those stunts were, but apparently... Tom Cruise has ideas for Mission Impossible 7. Let me repeat that for you guys. Tom Cruise has ideas for Mission Impossible 7. How in the holy mother of shnikes is Tom Cruise going to top what he did with Mission Impossible Fallout? Now if you guys saw my review of Mission Impossible Fallout, you guys would know that I absolutely love Mission Impossible Fallout and actually on a rewatch in IMAX, I love the film even more. It's actually my favorite action film, not only of the year, but of the decade as well. Seriously, that film, I think it's one of the greatest action films I've ever seen. How Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise did everything, including that Halo jump, just blew my mind. And just when we thought they were going to probably throw in the towel, no, Tom Cruise has more. And apparently Christopher McQuarrie had this to say, and I'm pretty sure I'm paraphrasing what he's saying here. But Christopher McQuarrie had this to say, and it makes me really intrigued with what Tom Cruise has in store. But he said that Tom already has ideas, world-topping sh**. Where else could they go for Mission Impossible 7 unless that they take it into space? And actually, Tom Cruise did talk about that in an interview about maybe taking the franchise into space. I mean, hell, which I'd be down to see. But I mean, really, what could top the Halo jump? What could possibly top that amazing bathroom fight? The amazing motorcycle chase? The helicopter stunt? I mean... That's one of the crazy things I've ever seen besides the Halo jump. But no, really, I thought the Mission Impossible Fallout was already bringing out the best that they had to offer, and knowing that Tom Cruise has even bigger ideas... I'm honestly worried for Tom Cruise that he might kill himself on one of these things. But no, I am curious to see these ideas brought to screen, I really am. Just be careful, Tom. Now, in terms of trailers this week, we did get one trailer to a film that I have been waiting for for years of my life. I'm talking years, and that is the adaptation of the Artemis Fowl series. Now, the Artemis Fowl series 
it was one of my favorite books as a kid. I loved that franchise to death, and I actually read the first 45, the f 45, no. I read the first four to five books. I know there is at least seven books, but the first two books are absolutely incredible if you guys haven't read them. But I had a lot of faith in this movie because Kenneth Branagh is directing, who is one of the best actor directors out there. And then I saw the teaser, I'm worried about this. Like, really worried. I like the look of the film. I like that they cast a fairly unknown actor, I believe Farida Shaw, I believe that's his name, to play Artemis Fowl. I like the skin tones of him. I like seeing the butler back. I think that's awesome. I don't know. The feeling from this trailer was not the feeling that I wanted to feel watching a trailer for Artemis Fowl. Now, if you guys have not read the Artemis Fowl books, the best way to get a script Artemis Fowl is like, it's basically Jason Bourne with fairies, but in a much more mature, much more mature way. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I've been waiting for these books to be adapted for the longest time, but seeing this teaser got me really worried. However, I do have a lot of faith knowing that it's Kenneth Branagh directing, so just please don't, don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Alrighty guys, and that's gonna do it for this week's show. Please comment down, let me know below. How do you guys feel knowing that Thanos may have been a narrator for Avengers Infinity War? Also, how do you guys feel about Charles Dance joining the Kingsman franchise? How do you guys feel about maybe Mission Impossible 7 happening? And finally, how do you guys feel about the first taste of her Artemis Fowl? Are you guys huge fans of the books like I am? Are you guys very worried? Or do you think the film looks great? Let me know below. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. If so, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe to see more. If you guys want to see any of our previous two shows, please click either right there or there. And of course, until next week, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great week, guys.